Hello students, today we are going to learn from the first unit from the supplementary section. The title of the supplementary is God sees the truth but waits. It's by Leo Tolstoy. Okay students, before going into the story, let's learn about the author. Leo Tolstoy was born on September 9, 1828 in Tula province, Russia. He is best known for the novels War and Peace and Anna Karnia. These two novels took Leo Tolstoy to great heights. He first achieved literary acclaim in his 20s with the semi-autobiographical trilogy, Childhood, Boyhood and Youth. And the other work, Sevastopol Sketches, based upon his experiences in the Crimean War. Right. Tolstoy's fiction includes dozens of short stories and several novels such as The Death of Ivan Illich, Family Happiness, Haji Murat. Right. He also wrote plays and numerous philosophical essays. Tolstoy died on November 20, 1910. Right. More information about Leo Tolstoy. Tolstoy had mastered many languages during his life. Not only was he fluent in English, he was good in French and German. He could also read in Greek, Latin, Spanish, Italian and Ukrainian and many other languages. His house library consisted of 23,000 books in 39 languages. That shows his reading. So, what is the purpose of this supplementary reader in the textbook? It is only because of to develop your reading skill. As Bacon says, reading maketh a full man, conference a ready man and writing an exact man. So reading is an exercise to mind. The importance of supplementary reader should be understood from this point of view. So after learning this story, you have to read silently in your home and try to get connected with the author. Right. So, before going into the supplementary reader, God sees the truth but waits. Okay, here is a warm up question. If you are punished for a prank your classmate played, how would you react to the situation? Right. You may get angry. You may scold him or her or you take revenge or you forgive. Right. While many would seek revenge or take vengeance or feel sorry for themselves, some may put their trust in God. Some may forgive others for the wrongs done to them and move on life. Okay, what is your take on this? Discuss with your friends. Okay, let us go into the story. Just find out the characters. I want Dimitrich Axionov. He is the protagonist of the story. The other one Marker Semyonik and the next one Axions 
merchant friend axionos wife the governor the district police inspector right the story is about faith forgiveness freedom and acceptance of a young merchant named axiono who was sent to prison for a crime that he did not commit let's go to the story turn to the pages turn to supplementary on the first page of the lesson the story starts from vladimir in the town of vladimir lived a young merchant named ivan dimitrich axionov he had two shops and a house of his own axionov was a handsome fair haired curly headed fellow full of fun and very fond of singing when he was young he used to drink and behaved disorderly but after marriage he gave up drinking and he became a good man one day his wife had a bad dream when i want prepared to go for a fair his wife said to him i have had a bad dream about you so please don't go i want laughed and he went to the fair when he had traveled a half way he met a merchant whom he knew and they put at the same inn for the night they stayed together they had some tea together and then went to bed in the adjoining rooms next morning he started his journey again but things got changed in the next morning what happened then at the tea stall he stepped out into the portico ordering a samvar to be heated samvar is a kind of vessel that tea is produced you can look at the picture then he got out he took his guitar and started to play at that time suddenly a troika a three horse cart troika draw up with tingling bells an official and followed by two soldiers came near to him the official came to oxiono and asked many questions oxiono was surprised he didn't know he started to panic he was cross questioned by the official what did you spend last night were you alone or with a fellow merchant did you see the other merchant this morning why did you leave the inn before dawn these were the questions asked by the officials oxino could do anything he was stammered axino wanted and he asked the official why do you cross question me as if i were a thief or a robber i am traveling on my own business and there is no question of me why do you question me the police officer said i question you because the merchant with whom you spent last night has been found with his throat cut we must search your things ah he was shocked akshino was shocked the police officers searched axionos luggage and drew a blood stained knife axionos again shocked 
he could not speak he stammered i don't know it's not mine the police officer asked axino this blood stained knife is in your bag tell me how you killed him and how much money you have stolen from him as if he was guilty his voice trembled axino grew pale he told the police officer that after drinking tea with the merchant he did not see him again and he is just had only 8000 rubles of his own he did not steal the money of the merchant but the police official tied him blindly and took him in a cart and imprisoned near the town he was charged for murdering and robbing 20000 rubles he couldn't get any help he was arrested he was imprisoned his wife came she was hopeless too when she saw axino in the prison dressed in the prison dress and in chains she fell down after some time she asked what can we do now axino and uh, axino told her we shall send a petition to the czar with the chief of that city but the wife replied already we have sent the petition but it was not accepted axino was depressed he was helpless his wife asked him tell me what really happened he began to weep oh you to suspect me still axino could not overcome his depression he said to himself it seems that only god can know the truth the truth is i am not the murderer i am not the robber but i don't have any proof only god knows the truth it is to him alone i have to appeal and from him alone i could expect mercy after that he wrote no more petitions he just prayed to god he was driven to siberia and unfortunately for 26 years he was a convict in siberia in prison he learned to make boots with that money he bought books he started reading books in the prison and the most famous book that he read was the lives of saint after that the prison authorities liked him very much he was respected and after many years the inmates in the prison called him as grandfather the saint right so almost 26 years have passed one day a fresh gang of convicts came to the prison in the evening the old prisoners sat around to hear with the new prisoners to learn about their native town axino was very eager to know about his town what is the name of his town yes. vladimir axino sat with them one of the new convicts a tall man a strong man of 60 with a closely cropped gray beard was telling the stories what he had been arrested for he told the gathering i was arrested for stealing a horse 
I want to go to my home quicker. So I took a horse and after riding on it, I let it go. But I was caught for stealing and now I am a prisoner now. I have done many crimes earlier, but I was not found out. But for a simple thing, for stealing a horse, now I was imprisoned. Okay. He told, I am from Valmy. My name is Mokar Semyonik. And after hearing that, his name and the name of the town, Aksino was eager to know more about Vladimir. He asked Marker, Tell me, Marker, do you know anything of the merchants? That is particularly the family of Aksinos of Vladimir. Are they still alive? How are they? How is the family of Axino? And uh, Mokka told him, I know them, of course. I know them very well. They are now rich. Though their father is in Siberia, I think so. I think in the same jail, he is there. He was convicted for a murder. But their family is good. They are rich. They are happy. And uh, after some time, Mokar went to Axino. He doesn't know who this Axino is. Okay, Granddad, how did you come here? How you got imprisoned here in Siberia? Axino did not like to speak of his misfortune. He only sighed and said, For my sins, I had been in the prison for 26 years. Mokar asked him, For what sins? But he didn't say anything. The inmates of the Mokka told the newcomer how Oxino came to be in Siberia. How? Someone had killed a merchant and had put the knife among Oxino's things and Oxino had been unjustly punished. After some time, Going to the room, Axino wondered whether this man knew who had killed the merchant. He went back to Tundra's exiles. He thought whether this marker knows the killer, the real killer. He felt terribly unhappy and all sorts of image rose in his mind. He saw in his mind the place where he was flogged. He was bet the executed place and the people standing around the chained hands. And he was standing among the convicts all the 26 years of his prison life and his premature old age. These are the pictures that come to the mind of Oxeno. Right. Now he had a kind of vengeance. His anger was so great against Mokka Semyonik that he longed for revenge. He kept repeating prayers all night but could get no peace. During the day he did not go near Mokka Semyonik not even look at him. He doesn't know what happened in that night. Marker dig the hole to escape and it was watched by Axino. And the Marker threatened Axino. If he informs, he will kill him. Axino trembled with anger as he looked at his enemy. Mokar seems to be enemy for him now. He drew his hand away, saying, I have no wish to escape, and you have no need to kill me. You killed me long ago. 
as to telling of you, I may do or not as God shall direct. I am not going to report you to the governor. God will look after you. You have already killed me. You are not going to kill me again. And that's the tunnel through which he planned to escape. Right. Now, the next morning, the prisoners found the tunnel. Governor anchored all the prisoners. Finally, he came to the truthful old man to tell the truth. Axino's lips and hands trembled and for a long time he could not utter a word. Axino glanced at Mocker Semyonik and said, I cannot say, Your Honor, it is not God's will that I should tell. Do what you like with me. I am in your hands. Governor tried many times, but he could not get a valid answer from Axino. That night, when Axino was lying on his bed and just beginning to doze, someone came quietly and sat down on his bed. Axino recognized it was Mokha. Mokha Semyonik was silent. He told Ivan Dimitrich to forgive him. And Axino asked him, For what I have to forgive? It was I who killed the merchant and hid the knife among your things. I meant to kill you too, but I heard a noise outside. So I hid the knife in your bag and escaped out of the window. Mokar knelt before him. I want Dimitrich, please forgive me. For the love of God, please forgive me. I will confess that it was I who killed the merchant and you will be re released and you can go home. Axino replied. It is easy for you to talk, said Axino. But I have suffered for you these 26 years. Where could I go now? My wife is dead. My children, grandchildren, everyone have forgotten me. I have nowhere to go. Mokha Semyonik did not rise. But he bit his head on the floor. For Christ's sake, forgive me. Please forgive me. He started to sob. When Axino heard him sobbing, he too began to weep. Okay, God will forgive you. After that, Axino's heart grew light. His longing for going to his home left him. He has caught some peace within himself. His vengeance, his revenge disappeared in a sudden moment. After that, next morning, Mokha Semyonik confessed his guilt. But when the order for Axino's release came, Axino was already dead in his room. It took 26 years to prove that Axino is not guilty. I think you enjoyed this story. God sees the truth but waits by Leo Tolstoy. Okay students, now let us learn the summary. Just look at the sentences. It will help you to write your own paragraph. Oxino lived with his wife and children. He decided to make a trip to the fair. His wife tried to stop him because she had a bad dream. The local police officer 
arrested and charged him with murder. Axiono frequently prayed to God. He bought the book Lives of Saints in prison. He was sent to work in the mines of Siberia. He grew old there. A petition of mercy was turned down and he felt devastated. Axionov was respected by all the inmates due to his gentle behavior. One day he met Marker Semyonik. Axionov found out the truth about Marker. Eventually, Marker Semyonik admitted his crime. Axionov forgave Semyonik. He accepted the truth, attained self-realization and died in peace. Students, this is the summary. You can use the clue words and the messages and you can write your own paragraph. Okay, towards the end. Forgiveness is a gift to oneself. Forgiveness lets you free patience and faith in the time of adversities are great virtues. So forgive everyone. You don't take in your heart those who harmed you. Forgive them. Forgive everyone. That will help you to have your freedom. Okay, students. Read the story silently and feel the life of Axino and learn to forgive others. Thank you. Now, let us learn the textual questions. Just take your book and turn to page number 31. Have you taken it? Shall we go towards the left? Answer the following questions in a sentence or two each based on your understanding of the story. Just try to say it to me. Right. The first question. Why did Axino's wife stop him from going to the fair? Because she had a bad dream. Right. The next question. What is the importance of Axino's wife's dream? Do you remember the story? Yes. She had a bad dream. And in that dream, he found Axino's hair growing, becoming white. Right. Let's move to the third question. What made Axino leave the inn before the dawn? Actually, Axino usually travels when the climate is still cool. That's why he started to travel early in the morning. Going to the next question. Fourth question. What were the circumstances that led to Axino's imprisonment. Do you remember? The main thing is the police officers found from his luggage the blood stained knife. Right, moving to the next question. Come to the question number F. Why didn't Marker disclose that he had killed the merchant? Marker. Why he didn't disclose? that he killed the merchant because he had a fear of getting beaten to death. That was, that was the punishment while a thief or robber or murderer was caught by the policeman. Right. Going to the next question. Did Marker feel guilty when he heard Axino's story? 
No. Maka did not feel guilty. Okay, students. When you do a crime, we should feel guilty for that. Whether it may be committed knowingly or unknowingly, we should feel the guilty. And we should also forgive. We should not do crimes, but we should develop the habit of forgiving others because forgiving will make you free. Thank you, students. Thank you. நிகழ்ச்சியை பற்றிய தங்களின் மேலான கருத்துக்களை கீழ்கண்ட முகவரிக்கு கடிதம் மூலமாகவோ மின்னஞ்சல் மூலமாகவோ குறுஞ்செய்தி மூலமாகவோ தெரியப்படுத்தலாம் அனுப்ப வேண்டிய முகவரி சிறப்பு அலுவலர் கல்வி தொலைக்காட்சி எட்டாம் தளம் அண்ணா நூற்றாண்டு நூலகம் காந்தி மண்டப சாலை கோட்டூர்புரம் சென்னை ஆறு தொலைபேசி எண் ஏழு எட்டு இரண்டு நான்கு பூஜ்ஜியம் ஒன்று ஐந்து பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம் பூஜ்ஜியம்